In this video, I will work out various examples of how to use integration by parts. As a reminder, integration by parts is summarized by this formula. Here are the examples I will work with, roughly in increasing order of difficulty. These are just purely computational examples. If instead you're interested in the theory behind the formula, why the method works, watch the previous video, which is linked in the description. All these examples are well suited for integration by parts. I invite you to pause the video, try to compute these antiderivatives, and once you're ready, keep watching for the solution. For my first example, I want to integrate x times cosine x with respect to x. As a reminder, here is the formula for integration by parts. My function is a product, so that's a good way to start. When I use integration by parts, I have a choice to make. What do I take as u and what do I take as dv? x cos x dx must be u dv, but that can be arranged in a couple of ways. Let's keep an eye on our goal. I want the transform integral to be easier than the original integral. Whatever I choose as u, I will need to take the derivative of it. Whatever I choose for dv, I will need to take the antiderivative. So let's examine the derivatives and antiderivatives of x and cos x. For cos x, both derivative and antiderivative are plus or minus sign. Doesn't matter. But for x, it matters. The derivative is 1, which is simpler. The antiderivative is x squared times a constant, which is harder. If I want the second integral to be easier, it's a good idea to take the derivative of x and the antiderivative of cosine x. In other words, I want to take u to be x and dv to be cosine x dx. If u equals x, a derivative of x is 1, so du equals dx, and an antiderivative of cosine is sine. Let's see what I get then. I get u times v, which is x sine x, minus the integral of v du, which is sine x dx. Success! The transform integral is indeed easier than the original integral. Uh, actually, I know how to solve this new uh, integral. An antiderivative of minus sine x is simply cos x, don't forget the integration constant, and that's my final answer. As usual, we can verify the final answer by taking this derivative and checking that it is indeed x cos x. It's a good exercise. If we take the derivative of this function, we will see all the steps in integration by parts being undone. For my second example, I want to integrate x squared times e to the minus x dx. I will use integration by parts. So I need to think of this function as a product of two pieces. And for the transform integral, I will use the derivative of one of them and the antiderivative of the other. Let's choose what is what. The exponential, I'm not concerned about it. The derivative and the antiderivative are the same, up to a minus sign. But for x squared, the choice matters. The derivative is simpler, is 2x. The antiderivative is x cubed times a constant, is harder. So if I want the transform integral to be simpler, I should take the derivative of x squared and the antiderivative of e to the minus x. In other words, I will use integration by parts with u equals x squared and the rest as dv. Then a derivative of x squared is 2x and an antiderivative of e to the minus x is minus e to the minus x. With these choices, my integral becomes u times v, that is minus x squared e to the minus x, minus the integral of v du, that is minus 2x e to the minus x dx. I call this progress. I'm not done yet, but at least the new integral is simpler than the original, so we are improving. Now, what do I do with the new integral? Notice that using integration by parts once took me from x squared to x, while keeping the exponential the same. So how about we use integration by parts one more time? This time, I will take u as 2x and dv as the rest. 
then the u will be 2dx and v will be again minus e to the minus x. And let's see what I get. First, I keep the term that was already there. And with integration by parts, I should get u times v, which is minus 2x e to the minus x, minus the integral of v du, which is minus 2 e to the minus x dx. Excellent. I finally got it down to an integral I know how to calculate. So I copy all the pieces I already have. And an antiderivative of e to the minus x is simply minus e to the minus x. Don't forget the integration constant. And this is the final answer. We could write it a little bit, perhaps factor the exponential, but I'm not going to bother. For my last example, I want to integrate arctangent of x with respect to x. It may surprise you to be this example in a video about integration by parts, because this doesn't look like a product. Well, every function is a product. I can just think of it as 1 times arctangent of x. But still, why use integration by parts? Arctangent makes the integral complicated. I don't have any good guesses. I cannot think of any function whose derivative is arctangent or even includes arctangent in any way. So my top priority is to get rid of arctangent at any price. Transform this into another integral that may be complicated but doesn't include arctangent. An integration by parts can help with that. What happens if I try integration by parts and I take u to be arctangent of x? In that case, du should be the derivative, 1 over 1 plus x squared times dx. And that's the point. The derivative of arctangent is simpler than arctangent. I'd much rather work with an integral that involves this function than arctangent. There is a price to pay, however. If this is u, then dv must be the rest. And therefore, v will be equal to x. I introduce an extra x. I said that my first goal was to transform this integral into one that didn't involve arctangent. So I can do it using integration by parts this way. I don't know if this is going to work, but it's worth a shot. So I will try it. And if it doesn't help, I'll come back and try something else. OK, then. My integral becomes, using integration by parts, is u times v. That's x arctangent of x minus the integral of v du, that is x over 1 plus x squared dx. Excellent! Arctangent is gone. Uh, I think this was a good trade-off. But I'm not done. <laughs> I still need to compute this integral. Now, in this case, I notice that the derivative of the denominator is exactly the numerator except for a 2, a multiplying constant. This suggests that I try a substitution and I make the denominator the new variable. So I will do a substitution and I will call t 1 plus x squared. I am using t as the variable rather than u so as not to confuse it with integration by parts. You can use any name you want. And if that is t, I also have to change the differentials dt will be the derivative of 1 plus x squared, which is 2x times dx. I need a 2 in the numerator, so let me multiply and divide by 2. And perfect. Now the term I need for the differential is right there. So I can do this substitution, and I get x arctangent of x minus 1 half of the integral of dt over t. And at this point I am happy because I know I can finish this, and now I see a path to complete the integral. An antiderivative of 1 over t is ln absolute value of t. And don't forget the integration constant. I now I simply have to undo the substitution. t equals 1 plus x squared. Notice that I got rid of the absolute values, because I know this expression is always positive. And that is my final answer.